uh, more a comment to so what some of my other colleagues had pointed out, uh, particularly the, the comment about improving the status quo, the feeling that our objective here is to just improve the status quo. I have a very different point of view on that. I think what we're supposed to be doing here is solving a problem, a very big problem. You know, when I watched the, uh, the video of the school shooting in, New in Newtown, I was devastated by it because what came to my mind was the years that I spent going into my kids' elementary school, volunteering as a parent, and walking through those doors where we had the glass on either side of the doors. And we had glass inside those doors. And then we had glass all along the main office. So when you're standing on the sidewalk and you're looking in the building, you're seeing hundreds of children in the hallway, and you're seeing several different school officials working in the main office. And all I could picture when I saw that video was what it would have been like if I were standing in that space right then and the shooting was happening while I was there. And how much devastation. It could have been more than 20 kids and six adults. It could have been hundreds if it was a little bit different place. And so I think when I look at that, I see this as a real problem that we need to solve. But yet, I don't see how this bill solves the problem. The Connecticut shooting was the impetus to this debate. But if you look at the, the bill, the bill doesn't even solve the Connecticut shooting. If this bill were in place in Connecticut a month ago, the, the shooter would have still had access to those guns because his mother never would have had to deny him access because he was never adjudicated as, having a mental, as being mentally uh, disabled or mentally unable to have it, the guns. In fact, our legislation that we put forth today, he was not convicted of a felony. He, didn't, he was not adjudicated as mentally defective. He hadn't been committed to a mental, mental institution, and he was never a subject of an order for protection. So here we implement this bill, or we propose this bill to solve a problem, and it doesn't really solve it. And if you say, well, this bill would take care of the, the guns, the weapons that were used, well, yeah, except that if you look at the Aurora, Colorado shooting or look at Timothy McVeigh in Oklahoma City, you didn't even need a gun to cause those kinds of problems. In Aurora, Colorado, he used homemade napalm. He used homemade bombs and, and electronic devices that he got directions on the Internet for. So if you don't have the gun, you still have the weapon to cause that kind of damage. So this bill does not solve the problem. I appreciate that, that a lot of people put a lot of time and energy into trying to solve this problem, but this bill doesn't do it. And I don't think it even comes close to doing it. The only thing this bill really does is infringe on the rights of law-abiding gun owners. That's the only thing that it really accomplishes. So what I think we need to do is we know, need to go back and do something else. Because I certainly don't want to apply the same logic to fertilizer and rental trucks to stop an Oklahoma City type killing that we're trying to use here by trying to, to ban weapons when it's really the shooter that's the problem, not the weapon. One other point I just want to make about this, this process that we've just gone through. You know, I, you guys see me walking around the hallways at 11 o'clock at midnight. I am miserable at 11 o'clock or midnight waiting for a bill to come out on the floor. And I can tell by some of the questions that are asked that it's not just the minority, but some members of the majority who don't really know what's in this bill either. And I wish I could say this is the only time this has ever happened. But I was here in 2009, 2010, when this kind of thing happened all the time. It's called legislating in the dark, literally, in the dark of night, but without knowing what's going on. Other than the ha few hands in leadership, we don't know what's going on. Do we want to go back to 2009 and 2010? Do you remember the, the news reports, the, what, the, the approval ratings we had? I think at the time our approval rating was like 19%. And do you blame the public? I mean, come on here. We're here all day. I was in my office at 8.30 this morning. We have all day long to look at the bills, to have the discussions, have the meetings, have the discussion and debate so everyone can see what's going on. I received hundreds and hundreds of emails and letters and, and phone calls to my offices over the last few days opposing this type of legislation. I received just as many in the last 12 hours complaining about the process. 
I personally do not want to go back to the dysfunction of 2009 and 2010. It's not fair to the people in the state. It's not fair to us. So please, I say to the governor, I say to the speaker, and I say to all my colleagues here today, let's not go there. It's a bad place to be. Nothing good is accomplished that time of night, and we shouldn't be doing that anymore. Thank you.